In this question, a student attempts to write a formula equation to represent a chemical reaction. And our equation for this question is shown here. So our goal is to figure out, is this equation balanced correctly? So we're gonna follow exactly the same steps as we did for visual equations. Remember, if it's balanced, that means that the number in the reactants, that's the before, is going to equal the number in the products for every element. So I'm just gonna write out my equation a bit bigger down here so we can see it better. So we've got SeO2 plus H2O goes to H2SeO3. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and count the number of Se, that's selenium, in the reactants and the products. So in the reactants, we have one Se here, and that's it. So we've got one in the reactants, and then in the products, we have one Se here. So we've got one in the reactants and one in the products for Se. So those are equal, so that's looking good so far. Next, let's look at oxygen. Here we have O with that subscript 2. That means we have two oxygens there, and we have an O on its own there with no subscript, so that's one oxygen. So in total, we have one, two, three oxygens in our reactants. One, two, three. Afterwards, we have our O with that subscript three, showing we've got three oxygens afterwards. So we had three before and three after, that is equal. So that's looking good so far. And lastly, for the hydrogen, we have H with a subscript two here. That tells us we have two hydrogens before. And after we have H with a subscript two as well. Again, that shows us we have two hydrogens after. So that's two before and two after. Again, that is equal, so this is looking good. So we've now checked all of our elements that are in our equation. They're all balanced. That tells us our equation is balanced correctly. We need to check every single one of these elements because even if the first two were balanced and then the hydrogen wasn't, that would still mean that overall the equation was not balanced. If it helps, you can write out your equation without the subscripts. So for example, instead of writing SEO2, you could have written SEOO -O to help you visualize. There are two O's. And then for the H2O, you could have written HHO to help you visualize that. And the same here for the H2, we could have had HH, then we had SE, and then for the O3, you could have had OOO. -O -O. Some people find this helps them to visualize what's going on a little bit better. We now have a different equation that we're analyzing here. So again, I'm gonna write that out a bit bigger to help me as I do my calculations. So we have two NaNO3 goes to Na2O plus two NO2 plus O2. Okay, so first let's look at the Na, that's sodium. So we can see here on the left-hand side in the reactants, we have Na on its own with no subscript. However, we do have a coefficient before that compound, saying we've got two sets of that compound NaNO3. So even though there's no subscript on the Na, we still have two sets of them. So we have two Na's. in our reactants. Then in our products, we have Na with a subscript two. So there's two of them. So also two Na in our products. So let's fill that out. We had two before, two after. That's equal. So that's looking good so far. 
Next, let's look at the nitrogen. So on the left, we have an N with no subscript, but we do have that two coefficient at the beginning of that whole compound saying we've got two sets of that compound. So we're gonna have two nitrogens on our reactant side. And then on our product side, we have N here. Again, no subscript, but we have that coefficient two in front of that NO2 compound, so we've got two sets of it. So we've got two sets of one nitrogen, so that's two nitrogens in total on the right-hand side. So we have two before and two after, which is equal, so nitrogens are looking good. Lastly, we have to look at our oxygen. So in our reactants, we have O with a subscript three, and we have that coefficient two. So we've got three oxygens, and we've got two sets of them. So we've got two times three oxygens. So that means we've got six oxygens before. After, we've got one oxygen here, no subscript and no coefficient, so there's just one there. Then we have an O2 here, so that's two oxygens, and it has that coefficient two. So that's two oxygens, and there's two sets of them, which is four oxygens. Finally, at the end, we have one O2, so that's just two oxygens. So in total, before we had six oxygens, after we have one oxygen here, four oxygens here, and two oxygens here. So that's seven after in total. So we've got six before, seven after, and this does not match up. So the oxygens are not balanced in this equation. As a result, the equation is not balanced correctly. So even though the Na and the N were balanced very well, because the oxygen wasn't balanced, the overall equation is not balanced. So just be sure to look out for both the subscripts and the coefficients to make sure that you're counting each of your elements correctly. Again, if it helps, you can write out each element. So instead of writing NaNO3, you could have written NaN and then three O's to help you visualize that we've got three O's there. And you would have had two lots of that because there was a coefficient two. So if that helps you, you can write them out fully showing all of the elements instead of using the subscripts.